Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have an interesting collaboration beer and I heard that this one's predecessor was very very highly rated but unfortunately I never actually got to try this one so I thought I'd definitely have to try this and see how we get on. So this one is half English, half Scottish. The Scottish part comes from Brewdog up in Ellen in Aberdeenshire which used to be one of my local breweries when I was studying chemistry up there and of course Cloudwater Brewing Company from down in Manchester in England who are one of the best rated breweries down in England at the moment and quite rightly in my experience but we're going to have a taste tonight of the New England IPA version 2 which comes in at 8.5% IPA as you've probably guessed it's one of these New England hazy style IPAs and it was rated at 98 overall on rate beer and 93 within the style as I always say though take rate beer with a bit of a pinch of salt because in some ways it is kind of American dominated uh, and you do some of the bigger companies do have an interest in that in that as well but it does give you a fairly decent barometer of how good your beer is going to be it's just a peer reviewing site but I'm definitely looking forward to this one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. As I've said before though I do have my reservations about how Brewdog are behaving as a company but if it's a good beer I'm going to tell you that it's a good beer. I'm not going to change my kind of uh, my outlook on these beers. If it's good I'll tell you it's good. But anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries. If you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery websites linked to my other reviews that I've done both from Brewdog and from Cloudwater. No doubt there will be more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, county, city, state, prefecture, whatever it is you're in interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there of course both for my Scottish reviews and another one for the English reviews and they are co both constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway a little brief bit about Brewdog then. So Brewdog was founded back in 2007 by James Watt and Martin Dickey and their first brewery was a very small one in the Keswick Industrial Estate in Fraserburgh in the very northeast of Scotland. But but more recently they've moved their main brewing operations down to a purposely built facility in Ellen which is closer to the city of Aberdeen where I used to study chemistry. But these guys were known for being a very experimental craft brewery and particularly at one point for their strong beers as well but they're largely inspired by the American craft brewing renaissance. They did cite Stone Brewing Company as one of their kind of uh, main influences and indeed if you try the early punk IPA that tasted really quite similar in some ways to the uh, to the Stone Brewing Company IPA. They had a really kind of similar feel to them actually but of course they've changed the recipe over the last couple of years when they've been doing that. But these days they've got several pubs throughout Scotland and indeed the rest of the UK. Now they're international as well. I think the furthest away ones they have are in Tokyo in uh, the Rapongi district over there and then also the one in Sao Paulo in Brazil and they're constantly opening up new ones. I think the most recent one was Tallinn in Estonia uh, but they're all they're basically they're all over the place. Now they started back in 2010 with that with the bar in Aberdeen. I was there on the opening Night. And what was quite interesting about Brewdog in the beginning was that they were a completely kind of a fan funded brewery, if you like. They had their Equity for Punk shareholding program where fans of the brewery could buy shares, and this was what Brewdog used to invest in new bars, new tanks for the brewery, and basically build up their infrastructure. But they did cause quite a um, how do you say, they did cause quite a riot if you like in the beer community recently because they've criticised other companies for selling part of themselves and Brewdog did that when it came to an American investment company who also owned part of Pabst Blue Ribbon. They always said we want to be against the big beer companies and all of this sort of thing and they did kind of sell it themselves in a way and uh, to me I'm a bit, dis I was quite disappointed in that. I wasn't, I wasn't caring there was a lot of people who got really politicky when it came to that but um, as I said if it's a good beer that Brewdog produce I'll tell you it's a good beer but in some ways I do have my reservations about how they're behaving because what they do does tarnish the name of Scottish craft beer a little bit. The guys, the likes of Tempest and Cromarty and the other ones who are doing some really interesting stuff. Um, but these guys, they do have a second brewery now over in Columbus in Ohio in America. I think that's just about to open but they've got a hotel there where they're doing beer spas and all of these random things. It seems like a bit of a waste of beer to me to take a bath in it because it ruins it. Um, but they're also doing spirit distilling as well and which is going to be sold under the name Lone Wolf Distillery. So Brewdog have done some pretty cool things but as I say as a company they're behaving a little bit kind of meh at the moment it's all about image and it's all about all of this kind of, it's all about image and marketing and buzzwords and things like that just now but like I said if it's a good beer I will tell you it's a good beer but that's all you need to know about them just now if you want to learn more do check out the, the link to their website and stuff in the description below but anyway on to Cloudwater then so Cloudwater were founded back in early 2015 by Paul Jones and James Campbell after the latter left Marble Brewing Company another very good brewery from Manchester of course but they were also joined 
joined by Al Wall and Will Franz, who have an experience in home brewing, uh, I think professional brewing as well, and also bar management. So the company actually signed a lease for this kind, for this archway that they have in the Piccadilly Trading Estate, and it had quite a big capacity at the time. When they first moved into this, they had capacity to age about 200 barrels of beer at any one time, and they were going to use that for sour projects and all these other things, but they did have room to expand their brewing capacity as well, and I think they've done that two or threefold over the last couple of years, and it was mainly their double IPAs and their IPAs and things like that that really made this brewery take off. They are probably one of the most hyped breweries in England these days, and one of the best craft breweries you're going to find, incidentally. The hype that you hear for Cloudwater is definitely warranted, in my experience at least, and especially the guys reviewing down in England will tell you that. These double IPAs that you get out from Cloudwater are something else, actually, but um, they are doing really, really well, and Cloudwater as I say, it's a brewery in England that you really do need to try. They do tend to focus more on IPAs. I've seen them playing around with some sour beers like Berliner Weisses and stuff recently, but they, in my experience, they don't tend to do all that many darker beers, although there are a couple floating around that you can find. But I think basically what's happened with this collaboration is that Cloudwater have been invited to Brewdog because Brewdog's IPA, the standard of them, they did kind of drop quite a wee bit, but recently with the Hazy Jane, uh, the first version of this and now this one apparently, the standard is starting to get back up. So I think Cloudwater essentially have kind of taught Brewdog how to brew this style. So so maybe Brewdog are actually going to pick up over the next little while because Cloudwater do some pretty damn good stuff. But that's all you need to know about both the breweries here. Like I said, the websites to both of them are in the description below. And if you want to read a little bit about those, you can check them out. But anyway, let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer then. So like I mentioned to you, this one is an 8.5% Imperial IPA. It's hopped with Mosaic, Citra and Mandarina Bavaria. And uh, yeah, it should be quite an interesting one. Like I said, the first version of this was really quite hyped. It said on the side here, the New England IPA version 2, the East Coast fruit mafia is back and this time it means business our second transatlantic ipa de delivers a heavier hit all american hops unite once more for this beery superpower second coming tropical fruits on the nose followed by an intense juicy sweetness with peach melon and caramelized pineapple wheat and oats combined for the velvety smooth delivery and a hint of warmth precedes a dry hoppy finish new england ipa version 2 a full tip juiced up fog machine of a beer and it tells you a little bit about brew dog and cloud water on the, the label there and apparently it is vegan friendly so there's the bottle cap on this one as you can see the standard brew dog dog and there you can see it's the kind of it's a very similar style of artwork to the last one except they've changed it to turquoise and pink instead of the blue the kind of sky blue color that it was before but yeah nicely presented I mean I always preferred the original brew dog labels these ones of course were probably done just by a marketer who wanted to make more money but and um, we'll say it like that as I say <laughs> if the beer's good the beer's good but let's get it out and get on with the tasting then so yeah, as you can see, a nice smoky opening there, and you can smell some of these nice tropical fruits coming out of this one. So we'll see how we get on. Well, as you would expect from this beer, it's pouring a nice kind of hazy orange-yellow, and we'll leave that. I think that's about half of the beer, but we'll leave it there. And we can have a wee look at it then. So yeah, I think it's fair to say, not sure how well you can see this one, but the colour of this one for me, there's a hair in the glass, we'll get rid of that. But as you can see, it's a nice kind of... Um I think it's fair to say it's just a kind of nice orangey yellow colour. There is a little bit of haze to this. It probably will be a little bit more hazy further down. I can see there's a little bit of sediment just in this one, but there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of the head there. The head was a solid finger. It is kind of pure white, this one. There's not really a creamy tint to it or anything like that. But yeah, it does look really good. You can really smell the uh, the citra coming out of this one, actually. I'm getting a lot of citra from this. They said in the on the website that the uh, mosaic went into the whirlpool initially and then the dry hopping was with more mosaic, uh, some of the mandarina bavaria and the citra, but for me it's the citra that's really coming out of this one. I can really smell that distinctive kind of citra fruity note, but it smells really, really quite nice. But you can see a nice rich orange colour, nice looking beer. It's kind of exactly as you would expect from the New England IPAs, but it's not quite as kind of opaque as some of them. But as I said, further down, you might get a little bit more of that. But some nice big bubbles sticking towards the side, a few little ones going up to the head. The head instantly is about one finger and little bits of sediment too, but I think it's fair to describe this one as being your typical kind of uh, orangey, hazy IPA, this one. But it looks very nice, so let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Yeah, you start, when you actually go into it a little bit more closely, you start to get more of that kind of tangerine orange that you would expect from the mosaic. The Mandarina Bavaria, of course, is going to give you some nice kind of stronger oranges. The, the, the mosaic gives you a little bit more of that kind of tangerine note.
But yeah, that smells really quite nice actually. So yeah, tangerine oranges. A little bit of the mangoes, you're getting a lot of mango out of this which will be coming from the citra of course. It has that dis really distinctive mango note. When you go a little bit further back from it, you get a little bit of lychee I think. And there's a little bit of that almost lemon limey character as well, which again is from the, the citra. The citra is a really complex hop. It's one of my favourite ones in terms of the aroma, but the mosaic, it has a little bit of that complexity, but for me, it just leans more towards the orange ones. And I think on the basis of the hops that are in this, this beer maybe is going to suit me down to the ground, because I love the hops like Pacifica, Mosaic, Amarillo that give you the orangey flavours. I really love these orangey flavoured IPAs. And this one to me smells really nice. Of course, you've got that typical sort of floral aromaticity that you expect from these hops. It does lean a little bit more towards the grassy side of things, I would say, rather than the kind of spicy floral aromaticity. Most of these hops, of course, they're not anywhere near as spicy as the likes of Centennial or, uh, or anything like that. But you can smell a little bit of that nice malt base under there. It's got that wheaty, white, bready character and some of the oaty notes as well. But overall, as a hazy IPA, one of these New England IPAs, it does smell really quite nice actually. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and mull over the aroma of the beer before you actually try it. But let's get stuck into this one then and see how we get on. So this one is the New England IPA version 2, a collaboration between Brewdog from Ellen in Aberdeenshire and Cloudwater from Manchester in England. Slanja. That's pretty good. You know, I have to say, they've done a good job with this one. And it's one thing I always say about Brewdog, it's a shame that you have all of this nonsense going on in the background of the business when they are capable of producing beers like this. You know, just cut the market in rubbish, cut all the other things at the brewery and just focus on the beer because obviously they are capable. What I would say is, you know, when, the other thing is of course when Cloudwater are involved in this beer, they're not going to put their name on something that isn't good. And as the Hazy Jane that Brewdog produced recently, that's one of the best IPAs I've had from Brewdog. As I've always told you, my favourite was probably the Hardcore IPA. You can kind of still get it as Mr. President. I think there's a there's one hop in there that's been swapped around, but Hardcore IPA is one of my kind of big nostalgic beers. And I felt for a long time that Brewdog's IPAs just haven't been as good as they were. There was obviously things going on. They were trying to make them appeal to more people and stuff like this, but when they are capable of beers like this, you do wonder a lot of what's going on in the business. They are, there is that element of are they just trying to push and make more money kind of thing. But when they can produce beers like this, you know, just stick to doing that. That would be my advice to them. But yeah, that's really nice. I can see why, the, why people were saying if this is anything similar to uh, the first one, which I presume it is, it's probably the same base recipe and they've played around with the hops a little bit or put a little bit or just played around with the malt base very slightly to make it smoother, which seems to be a new trend of course. If the other one has the same kind of feel as this, um, I can see why it was really highly rated. Like I said, I really like the Hazy Jane and that's one from Brewdog that I do need to review for you at some point. But this is a really, really nice beer. As I always say with these ones, just sugar it around your palate a little bit and uh, allow your mouth to adjust before you start analysing it too much. But yeah, it, they've done a good job with this. There's no doubt in my mind. So the malt base pretty much is as you'd expect. You've got that white bready card that goes right across the middle of your palate. You can feel the sort of wheaty smoothness there and as the flavour progresses you start to get a little bit of that slightly creamier note from the oaty character of the beer. You can just feel the oats pushing their way out as you go further and further along. There's maybe just a little bit of a slightly biscuity, a very slightly caramel sweetness in the middle of this but to me mainly the malt base leans towards that bready, uh, that white bready, wheaty, oaty sort of thing. And that's, of course, I really enjoy these New England hazy IPAs for that reason. But that's really nice. The hops. This one, in terms of IBUs, I'm not finding it to be all that better. I mean, the, the New England IPAs are a lot less better than the West Coast ones, generally. But this one, to me, it comes across really as not all that bitter at all, actually. It's not got that big uh, an IBU count, I would think. I'm, I didn't look, actually, what the IBUs were beforehand. 
but it's really not that high even in comparison to some of the other ones that I've come across but it's a nice it really leans more towards the kind of juicy side of things so um, in the back corners of the palette you can pick up a little bit of earthiness that's one of the traits that you're going to find with mosaic and as you come further forward you can feel some of that floral aromaticity just sitting there on the edge of your tongue and that's where you get some of this bitterness but it is it really is more of a juicy beer this one than a bitterness and you can just feel as the flavour progresses a little bit of that floral aromatic bitterness pushes out. There is a wee tiny bit of spicy character to it which is unusual when you consider the hops in it because if you want a bit of spice normally you'll use like the Centennial or, uh, or something like that. But this one's, this one's really nice and around the very front curve of the palette you get those lighter kind of grassy notes and I think that's the Mandarina Bavaria coming out. I remember the Mandarina Bavaria being this really uh, quite more grassy hop and it just gave you a little bit of that smoothness. So maybe the kind of smooth grassiness that you get from the Mandarina is just mixing with the floral aromatics that you're going to get from the Mosaic and the Citra and it's just coming across really nice and really mellow actually. But this is nice. I mean, as I said, I wish Brewdog would just focus on the beer instead of constant expansion and all the business rubbish that's going on because they can do good beers like this. And Cloudwater, you know, you don't expect anything less than high quality from them. But yeah, with the fruity side of this beer, as I always say, the fruits come out just behind the very front curve of the palate and you get that nice kind of juicy a fruity note there you can feel just that little oily bubble and all those fruity esters just kind of roll out as you would expect with the hops in this one it's dominated by orange and tangerines for me you can feel the mosaic the juicy mosaic as the flavor progresses that just comes out a little bit there's a little bit of that grapefruit note from the the citra but on top of that you get a lot of these nice juicy mangoes and the mangoes and tangerines just mix together really well and you can feel a little bit of that stronger orange as the flavor progresses you do start to pick up a little bit of that slightly stronger orange that you would expect of the the mandarina bavaria the mandarina bavaria of course isn't such a high alpha acid hop it's higher than normal german ones but i think it's only around the eight nine percent mark so in comparison to Citra and Mosaic which I think are around the 12-13% mark and um, it really isn't as high in alpha acid hot but it gives you if you use it at the right point in the in the brewing process you can get a really nice orangey flavour from that and I think that's probably what they've done here but they've certainly done that done a nice job with this and for me as I said beer is as I always say beer is always subjective and people pick up on different things for me this one really hits the spot because it's got that nice orangey element to it and you know it's it's one of the better IPAs that I've had from Brewdog in a long time they always used to do some really really nice west coast IPAs I really enjoyed the Hazy Jane that they did recently I would say to me I actually think the Hazy Jane struck me as being a better beer than this one there's nothing really wrong with this you can play around with them all the all till your heart's content but this one I really like because of the orange lean that it has but the Hazy Jane did strike me as being a slightly better beer than this if that makes sense I probably enjoy this one a little bit more but I do think the Hazy Jane is a little bit better But the fruity notes are nice. Like I said, a little bit of grapefruit, mangoes mainly on top of that, the tangerine oranges mixing in there. Then you get the slightly stronger orange from the mandarina Bavaria. And as the flavour just kind of mellows out, you get a little bit of that lychee and kind of lemon limey note, I think, from the uh, from the, the, the citra just as it mellows out. I'm not picking up the, the peaches and apricots and things like that. They're saying to me this one's definitely orange and mangoes and things like that, but it's really nicely done. In terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then, I would say it's mid-body. The carbonation on this is very, very smooth. It's one of the smoothest beers I've tried from Brewdog actually, and indeed from Cloudwater. <clears throat> It's quite. It's a little bit more oily though. Some of the other cloud water ones I've had, I do remember them being just a little bit more creamy. This one's got a good little bit of oily character to it, and then the creaminess just comes out later. As I said, it's not too high in terms of its IBUs. I think this is lower than some, than quite a few of the other ones I've had, both from Brewdog and from it from cloud water as well. Um, the fruitiness is really juicy in this one. It's it's really nice actually how the fruity character comes out. It's got a good bit of complexity to it and the malt base, like I said, is very, very creamy and very smooth, but it does have a little degree of sweetness to it. But yeah, in terms of uh, Brewdog and Cloudwater, I think they've both done a good job on this one. 
you know, it's one of the better Brewdog IPAs that I've had and it certainly doesn't look out of place when it comes to the, the Cloudwater beers as well and I do particularly like this one because it has the orange elements which is one of my favourite kind of things when it comes to these juicy IPAs. So if it sounds like it hits the spot for you, if you like orange leaning IPAs, I think you'll enjoy this one and I do find it interesting just to see how the Mandarin Bavaria and the... Uh, and the mosaic go together because those are two of the more orange flavoured hops and the way the floral aromatics can just kind of smooth out in this one I think that's a very interesting quirk to this beer as well it's always cool as a beer reviewer to learn about different hop combinations and things like that and I think this one's a really nice kind of easy drinking summer IPA and it's not too high in IBUs as well so if you like just a nice kind of easy drinking IPA I think you'll enjoy this and in terms of being 8.5% you never you would never be able to tell that with this beer it covers the alcohol very very well so yeah, pardon me, the the New England IPA version 2, both from Cloudwater and from Brewdog, I think they've both done a pretty good job here, so yeah, thumbs up to Brewdog and to Cloudwater, and I do wish Brewdog would just focus on the beer when they can produce things like this. So yeah, it's been really cool to have a look at this one for you, I do wish I'd been able to review the first one, but I hope you've enjoyed my take on this beer nonetheless. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff, do check out my social media, let me know what your own thoughts on this beer are, er, are in the comment section below, and do let me know what your favourite beers are from Brewdog and Cloudwater as well. I've got some, some of my older Brewdog beers in a box that I've been keeping for a while, so maybe I'll review some of those over the next little while, but I'm sure I'll return to Brewdog and Cloudwater uh, over the next little while. So thank you once again for watching and I'll catch you guys soon. The New England IPA version 2 from Cloudwater and from Brewdog. Slander just now.